Shalom to the elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. Gotta give all praise to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem, Rakah, Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone who rule well, who teach well, and the sense of salutation to all the Akim, pushing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, throughout the whole world, waking up the hope for the elect. Shalom to the Akwa, who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah, coming up to another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and edification. And this is, the kingdom of heaven will be on earth. The kingdom of heaven will be on earth. Okay, you got a lot of these bugged out pastors, okay? Actually, the whole so-called Christianity community believe that heaven is going to be in the sky. Well, in the spiritual realm, well, the heavenly father, Yahweh, is sitting on his throne there, which that's a lie, man. Okay, they push that. And they also say that it ain't going to be no sex in the kingdom, right? It ain't going to be no sex in heaven. And heaven is in the sky, man, which that's a bunch of Roman Catholicism, man, a bunch of madness. So just a little lesson, bringing out a few precepts to prove that the kingdom of heaven will be on earth. So the Lord's willingness be edifying. Now the first verse I'm going to get is Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. <clears throat> and it reads. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence take it by force. What is that talking about, man? Read again. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. Okay, until now. Meaning well on earth, right? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and violence take it by force. It said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. What violence? And we know for a fact that everything that's in the spiritual realm, okay, in that in that dimension where the heavenly father, Yahweh, and the son, Yahweh, Shai, it's order, man. Everything is in perfect order, man, okay? So you know it's not talking about in, in the dimension of the heavenly father. So what is it talking about? Since the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence taken by force. So when you go to the blue letter, These devils, man. So when you go to the blue letter, and you go to Matthew, it say, well, I'm going to go to the uh, surface violence, which is G971, right? And it say, to use force, matter of fact, I'm going to play the word. Strong's G971, Biazzo. Biazzo. Biazzo, it say to use force, to apply force, to force, inflict violence on, right? Suffer violence. So, when you go to by force, which is G726, right? Let me play this word. Strong's G726. Harpazo. 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 It said to seize. Carry off by force. When did that happen? In 70 AD, man. Okay? Right? 70 AD, man. To seize. Carry off by force. To seize on. Claim for oneself. Eagerly. To snatch out or away, man. What is that, man? The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Well, he on earth, man. Okay, when the Israelites went down, man, okay, that they shall not come except they come and fall away first, right? So going back again, Matthew 11, 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence taken by force. That, don't, that didn't happen in the spiritual realm, man, okay? That happened here on earth, man. The Israelites were taken down. Okay, by force. 
was led away captive, man. So understanding just that verse right there, that's talking about here on earth, man. Okay? Because when you understand, when the Lord say, the kingdom of heaven, what's the kingdom of heaven? It's the people, man, before it's a place. Okay? It's the people. This is Revelation 18 and 20. And it reads, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for power have avenged you on her. It said, rejoice over her, thou heaven. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the people, man. Okay? He's speaking to the elect of Israel. Okay? Because it's the people before it's the place, man. Now, let's prove that. When you go to... Um, Matthew 22... In verse 30. And this is what it reads. This is proof that the Lord is speaking to the Israelites. The elect. They represent heaven man. This is Matthew 22 and 30. And it reads. Yahweh shall answer and said unto them. Ye do err not knowing the scriptures. Nor the power of nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry. Nor are given in marriage. But. Are as the angels of God in heaven, right? So he said they neither marry nor give it to marriage because you got these Christians talking about these so called Christians. Because Christians are Israelites, right? No other people can be Christians but the Hebrew Israelites. They said, uh, the angels read this verse right here that in the kingdom of heaven ain't gonna be no marrying and having sex. That's in the spiritual realm, man. Kingdom of heaven for the Israelites is going to be here on earth. Now, um, what's the verse? The Lord said, um, um, quoting it, matter of fact, he told them that, um, the kingdom of heaven, when they, when they well, I think it was the Pharisees and Sadducees asked him, he told them the kingdom of heaven don't come with observation, man. Okay? It don't come with observation, man. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Right? Matter of fact. Let me pull that up real quick. To lock it to match you to see. Because these these Christians is bugged out, man. These Christians is bugged out. And that's that Roman Catholicism doctrine that they believe, man. Okay? Now when you go to Luke 17 and 20, this is what it reads. Because he told him, man, the kingdom of heaven is in you. So he's speaking about the people. Okay, understanding. That's why the Lord say, hey, when you understand the ways of the Lord, man, which he only gave us a portion to receive salvation, which that's all we need to understand. This is um, Luke 17 and 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of power should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of power cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of power is within you, man. Okay? It's within you, the elect. Whoever the chosen elect is, it's within them, man. Okay? What did he tell you in 1 Peter 2 and 5? Each one... Each man, a spiritual man, makes up a spiritual brick to the Lord's spiritual temple, man. Okay? 
So the kingdom of heaven is within you. Now, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. And it reads, let me get in this book. Second Peter 3 and 12, and it reads, Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of power, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved. Is that talking about in the spiritual realm? No, man. No. That's talking about here on earth. We're reading again. Second Peter 3 and 12, Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of power, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We understand that's going to happen here on North America, man. On, on Earth, Babylon the Great. And all other parts of the world. That's going to happen here on planet Earth, man. Okay? Not in the spiritual realm. Right? It said the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth. Right? That word new is... Uh, kainos, which means refresh, right? Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay, looking for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. So, the Lord is going to destroy this earth with fire, right? The earth ain't going nowhere. He's just going to clean it off, right? Because fire is the best cleaning agent. He's going to clean it off and renew it, man. Okay? Now going from there to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. So this is what it reads. When you understand these scriptures, man, you understand all things that the Lord tell you, man. Okay? He tell you that in Proverbs 28 and 5. Even man understand not but a righteous man understand all things, man. So this is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Just to get to the point. And this is the Lord's Prayer. And it start off by saying what? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, man. Okay? So how everything is in the spiritual realm, it's going to be done here on earth, man. Because earth is going to be the kingdom for Yahweh Shah, right? The Most High Yahweh kingdom is in that dimensional realm. Just like when you watch the movie Thor, right? Thor went back up to the spiritual, to that spiritual realm, okay, to his father, because his father was representing Yahweh, and Thor is representing Yahweh Shah. So, earth is going to be Yahweh Shah's kingdom. That's why the Lord say, Heaven and Father Yahweh say, Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool, man. Okay? But earth is going to be Yahweh's kingdom, throne. If you can understand. So when you go to Isaiah 65, And that's why this scripture is beautiful, man. And if you can't get it, hey, we're moving on, man. It's Isaiah 65, and verse 17, and it reads, And ye shall, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying. Right? It said Jerusalem. What does uh, is that Galatians 4 and 26 it tell you that Jerusalem is the mother of us all, man. Okay? There shall be no more this an infant of days 
Meaning, infants ain't going to die young, man, like it is going on today. Nor any old man that have not filled his days. Meaning, if a man going to die, he's going to die in a very old age, man. For the child shall die in 100 years old. But the sin of being in 100 years old shall be a curse. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. Now, the Lord, this time on earth, because it ain't no way going to be building houses in, 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 uh, in, in the spiritual realm. Right? Everything is already perfect there, man. So this can't be talking about building houses in, in, in the, what it, uh, the fourth dimension, man. Again, Isaiah 65 and um, 20, right? It say, Isaiah 65 and 21, And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build in another inhabited. They should not plant in another eat. And that was the curses, that we was going to build houses and not live in them. And we was going to plant vineyards and not eat of the fruit. That was the curse that was on the Israelites. So the Lord saying right here, that ain't going to happen no more, man. Okay? And read again. Isaiah 65 and 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. Who's going to build our houses? We're going to have servants to do that. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, to about the Israelites, and another inhabited. They shall not plant and another eat. Well, the days of a tree are the days of my people, and trees live. <laughs> hey, when Esau eat them in around, man, to cut them down, trees live forever. Damn near, man. Okay. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah and their offspring with them. It's saying their offspring with them. Let you know it's going to be sex in the kingdom, man. How's the earth going to get repopulated? How are the two thirds going to come back, man? If it ain't going to be no sex for these stupid, wacky, tacky plantation Christians, man. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Okay? The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw. Because lion, eat, what they do? They, they eating gazelles right now, right? Hyenas. It said, a lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, save the Lord. Right? Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. That was the point, man. So all animals, he's saying, uh, the, lion, the lion should eat straw, man. As the bullock. So everything going to be in order, man. Okay? Now to link that together, when you go to Isaiah 11. Let me read that real quick. Isaiah 11 and 8. Just showing you, man, how everything going to be in order, man. Isaiah 11 and 8. And it reads, I'm going to start at 6. Like it just said in Isaiah 65, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. How is this possible if there will be no sex in the kingdom? And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And a suckling child shall play on the hole of an asp. What is an asp? Talking about a snake, man. It said a suckling child, meaning what? Infants, right? And a weaning child, what is a weaning child? A one that's a little older than the infant, right? And a weaning child shall put on his hand, and a weaning child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den, meaning a venomous snake den, man. Okay? They shall not. Hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as the waters cover the sea. How is this going to happen, man? It, that ain't going to be in the spiritual realm. 
So what are these devils talking about, man? That's not going to be in the spiritual realm, man. That's talking about hell on earth, man. Okay? This is um Revelation 21 and 1. The understanding of these scriptures, man. The Lord. The Lord said he opened your mind up, right? Revelation 3 and 20. He opened your mind and come in and sell with you. Right? And if you can't get the understanding, that means the Lord ain't something with you, man. All these pastors that go to these theological seminaries and they feel like they deep, man. They don't know nothing, man. Lord said he made foolishness of the world. But he made the wisdom of this world foolishness, right? So they think they're deep when they don't know nothing. And he said, he made, he said, by the foolish, by the foolishness of preaching, man, to condemn this world, man. This is our Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from power out of heaven, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of power is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and power himself shall be with them, and be their power. This to my who? Elect men. Now I say, and I saw, and John say, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from power, coming down out of heaven, right? Now, when you go to Revelation 11, because what John saw was the elect men coming back out of the chariots after the destruction, man. Revelation 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up. To heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, when they, when they was being up into the chariots, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And then the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, meaning a complete number. And the remnant were frightened, and gave glory to God of heaven, right? And gave and gave glory, right? Because what did the Lord say in Isaiah 24? I'm not going to read that. That wasn't in my lesson. But I'm going to read it anyway. Because that links together with that, man. Isaiah 24 and 15. Isaiah 24. I'm going to read this again. Revelation 11. 13. In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, meaning North America, right? Because it split up into uh, these ten FEMA regions. And then the earthquake was slain of men, 7,000, which is, which is a complete number. And the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven, right? And gave, and gave glory to the power of heaven. It said it was a fright that gave glory. Now this is Isaiah 24 and 15 showing you how these scriptures link. Isaiah 24 and 15. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, in the fires. In what fires? The missiles, man. Okay? When that earthquake happened, how is that going to happen? By the missiles, man. Okay? Isaiah 24 and 15. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires. Even the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, power of Israel in the isles of the sea. So it said that the, the remnant was frightened, man, and gave glory. The Lord said, Glorify ye the Lord in the fires, man. And they're gonna do so. Hey, cause hey, what first Peter 4 and 18 say that the elect shall scarcely be saved, man. So they're gonna be giving all glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Now going back. This is Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, and it reads, So let you know, man, the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth, man. 
There ain't gonna be no spiritual realm, man. He's SD one and four. One generation, one generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Okay? We'll be here on earth, man. This is uh Revelation eleven and fifteen and it reads and the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's telling you that Yahweh Shah is gonna reign here on earth, man. Again, Revelation eleven fifteen. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world, meaning all the kingdoms, man, okay, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever, okay? So, Yahweh Shah is going to reign here, man, on earth, man. I just read you Matthew 6, okay? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, man. Yahweh is establishing Yahweh Shai's kingdom here on earth, man. This is, um, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 10 and 14. And it reads, The Lord has cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. In their stead. The Lord has plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. So, let you know, man, that the Lord is establishing the kingdom of heaven here on earth, man. As a matter of fact, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time, he will set up over it one that is profitable, man. Here on earth, man. Not in no damn spiritual realm, man. This is Revelation chapter 5 and 9. And it reads, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to power by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our power, kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth okay on the earth man that don't say in the spiritual realm because if it did it would have said that man it say on the earth man this is acts <laughs> chapter four this is acts chapter one man Hey, the Lord said he gave the understanding to his elect, man. And they understand all things, man. So you heathen don't understand nothing, man. You two-thirds, man. You bugged out, wacky take Christians. Don't understand these scriptures, man. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Now, if it was so, why would the why would the apostles speak to Yahweh Shah in this manner, man? This is Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them, this is what Yahweh shall command the apostles, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hey, and that's another cut too, man, showing you that you don't get you don't come into the truth being baptized with water, man. You get baptized with the Holy Ghost, man, with the Spirit. Not by no damn water, man. 
That's another cut too for you dummies out there, man. Reading again. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Right? The Holy Spirit, man. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because we was in power when? With King David, man. With Solomon. So why would they ask the Lord, will you again restore the kingdom of heaven to Israel? And was, where was the kingdom of heaven restored at? So back in Acts, chapter 1, verse 6, right? Hey, man, these scriptures is beautiful, man. For the Lord to give you the understanding, uh, you know, um, a portion of how he worked, man, is beautiful, man. Now, many are called, but few are chosen. But for the time being, man, the Lord give you the understanding, to understand a portion of his ways. It is beautiful, man. So this Acts 1 and 6, again, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, which is Yahweh, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because the kingdom was the kingdom was in the hands of the Israelites when? During King David and Solomon. Okay? Where was that in the spiritual realm? No, that was here on earth, man. Okay? That was here on earth, man. So when you go back to Revelation 1 and 5, or uh, Revelation 5 and 9, and they suck a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to power by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Some of the Israelites that were scattered everywhere. And Yahweh shall redeemed us from his blood. And he was. He was the only one that was able to loosen the seals, man. Okay? He was the only one to open the seals of the book, man. Okay? That redeemed us by his blood. Verse 10. Revelation 5 and 10. And has made us unto our power kings and priests. Don't I say that in Revelation? I mean, uh, Exodus 19. Okay, we shall be a nation, of, we shall be a, a kingdom of priests. And had made uh, and had made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, man. Don't say it in the spiritual realm. Don't say it in the fourth dimension. Or whatever dimension where Yahweh where Yahweh sitting at, man. Okay, where his throne resides. He's talking about him on earth, man. Which is going to be Yahweh Shai's kingdom, man. Yahweh Shai's throne. Now going to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. I'm going to start at verse 22. And I will make them one nation... It's going to about the um, the two sticks, right? The stick of uh, Judah and his companion, and the stick of Ephraim and his companions. So this is uh, Ezekiel 37, 22. And I will make them one stick. Not in the Salak, and I will make them one in the land. In what land? In Israel, man. Upon the mountain of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither they shall be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So ain't going to be no southern kingdom and northern kingdom. It's going to be one nation together, man. All 12 tribes. In verse 24, And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. 
and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Where's that at, man? Is that in the spiritual realm? No, man. That's talking about here on earth, man. We shall reign here on earth, man. It's, it's not. It's not that complicated, man. This is simple, man. But what he say? To the pure, all things are pure, man. And to the defiled, <laughs> all things is gonna be defiled, man. If you can't get it, you can't get it. The Lord have not opened your mind up to get it, man. And that's just how it is. This is um. Psalms 2 and 8. Psalms 2 and 8. And it reads. And so I'm starting at verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have said unto me, Thou art my son. Now, this is, this is the most high Yahweh talking to Yahweh Shai. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask to me, and I shall give thee. The heathen for thy inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Right? Where is that at, man? He said he shall give you half a shot, the, up, the heathen for thy inheritance, for thy possession, the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. Okay? The heathen is going to be given to you half a shot for his inheritance. And the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. Now that's what the Lord told Yahweh. Now this is what Yahweh told his elect men. That's why this is beautiful, man. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keep my works until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. It sounds like, that sound like giving uh, the heathens for thy inheritance, man. He said power over the nations, man. And that also sounds like the heathens going to be your inheritance and the utmost part of the land for thy possession, man. That's talking about him on earth, man. That's not talking about in the spiritual realm, man. Now, this is more proof that this is talking about here on earth, man. This is Isaiah chapter 60. And if you can't get it, man, we're moving on. This is Isaiah chapter 60. Just going to read a little bit because this lesson is not ready. And I don't want to go too long. Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Ain't gonna be no building in the, in, the, in the spiritual realm, man. Ain't gonna be no building up there in the heavens where Yahweh at, man. Ain't gonna build no building no walls, man. Okay, everything is already in order up there, man. Everything is already established, man. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, showing you that we're going to have servants in the kingdom. And their kings shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smart thee. The Lord say, smart us in his wrath. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee, because the Lord going to have mercy on thee, let. Therefore, thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. What well, forces? Everything, man. They're going to be paying tributaries forever, man. Okay, constantly bringing in. The forces of the Gentiles, man. Constantly bringing goods, man. And that their kings may be brought. Okay? Because what does it say, man? 
in, in, um, in Psalms, man. Let's get it, man. It said that kings should be brought. Hey, it takes scripture to tell you plainly, man. Hey, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 said, prove all things, man. So this is Psalms 148 and verse, it's like 149 and verse 7, start at 6. Let the high praises of power be in their mouth and a two sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment unto the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. Again, Isaiah 60. In verse 11 again. And that their kings may be brought. For nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. It said the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place. Because we're gonna have the best of wood, man. Our houses, our mansions is going to be built with the best of wood, man. Okay? We're going to have the best of the best, man. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Who is that? You Edomites, man. Okay, you Edomites. And you other heathen nations, man. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. From what? From all the work we done done here, man. It said the soles on our feet. Which we're going to be in our glorious body. So ain't going to be no soles. But it's representing all the hard abundance we had to serve here, man. Okay? And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, the Zion, the monument of the Holy One of Israel. Okay? That was the point on that. Showing you that we're going to have service, man. Now this is Isaiah 61. And um read one. The spirit of the Lord Yahweh power is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open up the prisons to them that are bound. Talking to who? So called Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, and Haitian. Okay? To proclaim the separate year of the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, because you know people were mourning back back in the ancient times, they throw ashes on their head. Ain't gonna be no more of that, man. It's gonna be all glorious, man. The oil of joy for mourning. It said oil of joy for mourning, right? Because right now, I'm going to tell you in Ecclesiastes 7 that it's better to dwell in, in mourning than to live in joy, man. Because we're in the land of our captivity. It's nothing joyful about being here in this place, man. The oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. The Lord in the scriptures, okay? The Lord refers, refers to us as trees, man. The planting of the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, that he may be glorified. And they shall build, and they shall build the old ways, meaning the heathen nations. They shall rise up the former desolation. They shall repair the way cities. The desolations of many generations. Showing you that the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth, man. And they got to rebuild. For a thousand years of hardcore slavery, man. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. You don't need none of this in the spiritual realm, man. Okay, it said aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Or the scripture tell you that the day shall come when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, man. Okay, 
Hey, so we shall overtake all our slave masters, man. Okay, all of us got to go to the plantation. We shall overtake them here soon, man. So this ain't going to happen in the spiritual realm. Because everything is in order already in the, in the spiritual realm, man. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. It said, but ye shall be named. This hasn't happened yet, man. This hasn't happened yet. It's coming to pass, though. You shall be named priests of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Hey, they boasting on us right now. They've been boasting on us for the over 500 years, man. They've been boasting on you so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, man. For your shame, you shall have double, double. And as we get a double cup in righteousness, he saw even gonna be in a, in the, he's gonna be getting a double cup in wickedness, man. Okay, in, in, in uh in righteous anger, man. Okay, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double everlasting joy. Shall be unto them. Okay, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Hebrews eight and eight, eight down to ten. Tell me the Hebrew Israelites, man, the twelve tribes of Israel, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah have blessed. Okay? Who are they talking about, man? Let's talk about you so called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indian Haitians, man. Look at this Isaiah 60 and 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. What land? Hill, earth, North America. Uh, not North America, Salakia. Earth, right? North America going to be done away with. The earth, man, is going to be beautified, man. It's going to be refreshed, man. Okay? I done. Paradise. Everything. Everything outside of North America, man. Okay, North America going to be totally destroyed, man. Again, Isaiah 16 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. Out of the Lord Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, will hasten it in his time. I will hasten it in his time. So this is coming, man. Kingdom of heaven will be on earth, man. And if you can't understand that, then the Lord ain't giving you the spirit to. This is, um, let me see. Zechariah 14 and we'll start at verse 8. And it shall be Zechariah 14 and 8. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be to lock you. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, meaning all righteousness, because all nations are going to cleave to the house of Israel. Half of them towards the former sea, and half of them towards the hinder sea, right? But that's going into uh, the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, right? In summer and in the winter shall it be. And the Lord Yahweh, by the name Shah, shall be king over all the earth. And that day there shall be one Lord, and his name one. 
All the land shall be turned as a plain from Gibel to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate into the place of the first gate unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hanel unto the king's wine press. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more de other destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Come on, man. This time I hear on earth, the kingdom, man. The kingdom's gonna be here on earth, man. And like it said, Revelation 5 and 9, that we shall reign on the earth, man. Okay? We shall reign on the earth, man. Reign meaning rulership, man. Okay? Kingship, man. Domicile for kings, man. That's not talking about the spiritual realm. It's a Lord willing, it's edifying. You gotta give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rikach, Barash, the honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well. In the sense of salutation to all the Akim pushing this truth throughout the four ends of the earth with him over the leg. Shalom to the Akwaf who are listening and learning. Hey man, this is beautiful, man. The kingdom of heaven will be on earth, man. Okay? Hey, and there's many more scriptures too, man. Many more, man. To prove that the kingdom of heaven will be on earth. It's a Lord witness of edifying. Shalom.